Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at environments inside of Element 3D and uh, hopefully show you some things that you may not know about. Now, environment maps are basically an image that wrap around your entire 3D world. So it looks something like this. It's a two by one image and it's specifically formatted so that it wraps perfectly and you can essentially look around 360 degrees. Let's go and take a look at how environment maps work and uh, we'll show you some uh, cool deviations of how you can use them. Now inside of After Effects CS6 we can actually do something kind of interesting. So I'm going to create a comp that uses the Ray Trace 3D renderer. Now if you have a supported graphics card this will work pretty well but I'm only showing you this to compare it to the way that element works. So We'll go ahead and hit OK. And I'm just going to take this image. It's an equirectangular. It's basically uh, an environment map. And we're going to go ahead and make a camera. And what you can do in the new CS6 is you can right click on a layer and change it to an environment layer. And what it does is it wraps it around the world. So if we take our camera and uh, zoom it out, and let me go ahead and create some text. And we'll make it a 3D layer, and I'll just go ahead and scale it up. So if I take the orbit tool, I can orbit around the scene here, and uh, you know, it looks pretty good. If I shut off the adaptive resolution, it's a little bit laggy, so it's it's not super fast, but it works pretty good. Now, if I take the camera tool and I pan the scene, so I use my middle mouse button and drag left and right, you can see that the background doesn't change. It only responds if the camera orbits or the rotation of the camera is changed. So basically, it's based on the direction of the camera. So if I wanted to do a subtle dolly movement that went side to side, I wouldn't get any background movement. I would have to orbit just a little bit. So that's just one thing to understand about most environment maps in a 3D program and otherwise. Now let's go and take a look at the way Element works. So let's create a new comp. We'll make a new solid and uh, we'll hit OK and we'll choose Effect, Video Copilot, Element. And let me jump into the scene setup and we'll just add an object. So we'll go to the projectile weapons and uh, we'll just add one of these missiles here. So we've got a missile, and if we come up here to the environment, we can see we have a bunch of built-in images. Now, these are 1K images, so they're 1,000 pixels. They're not very large. They're meant to be used as the reflection map, which doesn't need to be that large. But I can change it to some of these different ones, and you know we can look at them. We could turn on the environment in here, and if we hold down Alt, we can uh, look at our scene. So let me hit OK. And I'll also create a camera, and we'll make it, uh, you know, 24 millimeter. So, I'll shut this off. Now, the basic way it works is if we go into the render settings, we can turn on the show background environment. And that way we can actually see the background. Now, just like After Effects, if I pan the scene, the background doesn't move. However, we can actually change that by setting it up manually. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and just take one of these equirectangulars, put it into my scene, and inside of Element, what I want to do is load it up. Now I can load it into the environment override, but I'm actually going to load it into the custom layer. So I'm going to load it into the custom texture map and just click on the image and then jump into the scene setup. And then I'll just shut off the environment here. And then I'm going to come over here to the primitives. And I'm going to scroll down. And there's a curious object called an environment. So if I click on that, we have a strange looking sphere. But what we want to do is map that environment onto this sphere. So we need to reset the material. So we'll right click, choose reset. And we'll come in here. And let's set the diffuse, so we'll click on this, 
And what we can do, you know, we can load an image directly or we can just click on this drop down and actually load that custom layer. And this can be a video, this can be anything. We can even animate the environment map. So let's hit OK. Now it looks a little dim. What we need to do is come down to the illumination, turn on use diffuse color and set the intensity to 100%. And then just so that it's not affected by lights, turn the diffuse down to zero. So now we have a perfectly flat colored environment map. Okay, so we've got this environment object set up. Let's put it onto group two and take it off group one. So our missile is on group one, environment on group two. Let's hit OK. And let's shut the environment image off that's in the background. And what I want to do is go to group two, go to the particle look, and turn the size up. So this number is going to vary depending on what you want it to look like. But you can see I'm orbiting around and I've got my 360 degrees just like I want. Now let's take a look at the pan test. So if I zoom in here, I can actually dolly left to right and look at the background. The background actually moves. So the larger this is, the less it'll move because the further away it'll be. But if it's smaller, like 40, which you don't necessarily want it to be smaller because it'll look more distorted, but you can get more parallax. So depending on what you're trying to do, it might be useful for it to look more three-dimensional and have you know a little bit of parallaxing and not just be static when you pan left to right. So this is cool, but what if I wanted to add a blur to the background? Well. I could take the map, I could pre-compose it, and I could jump inside and I could blur it out. And then wait for it to load, and it would be blurred out, there we go. However, let me show you another idea. Let's say I wanna color correct just the missile. Well, I need to separate it from the background. So here's something you can do. Let's take the element layer and duplicate it and then take the top copy and go into the particle replicator and set the count down to zero. And so now we have just the missile by itself and let's go to the copy here, go to group one and shut the count down to zero and now we just have the background. So then we turn them on together and our scene is back together. However, now we can color correct or even add a blur specifically to just that layer. So now I could take my missile, I could uh, you know, add some color correction to it without affecting everything else. And by the way, another quick thing that uh, is a little bit of a hidden feature is if your textures start to look a little grainy or noisy, go into the output and sampling, set the compressed textures to off. And what that'll do is use the original files and not compress them on the GPU. Um, in most cases, you want that to happen to keep things optimized, but if you can tell, you know, things are just not quite looking right, try unchecking that. And uh, as long as you have enough memory, it'll make things look cleaner. And this also brings up another idea and that is you don't have to use the same reflection map on your object as your background. Meaning I could go inside of the missile and I could use a different environment reflection map. You know, maybe the default one with the blur. You know, it looks similar to the scene that we're currently in, but maybe it just looks better. The highlights sort of look better for you or whatever that, you know, whatever the reason is just have a separate reflection map and your background can be a different one altogether. Now one last final tip is you want to be careful that your reflection map is not that large. So in this case we're using the 4K map for the background because we want it to be clear. However, you don't need that much resolution for your reflection map. So I have here a 4K image so I'm going to go ahead and just replace this. I'm going to hold down Alt and replace it. And let's say I want to reflect this. 
Well, what I need to do is bring out a 1K version of it, so a smaller size. And what you can do is just resize the original and put this inside of the comp also. And let me add it to the custom layers inside of Element. And we'll add the 1K and jump inside the scene setup and then go to the environment and set it to the 1K. So it's at the bottom here. And hit OK. So this way, it still renders really fast, but the reflections will look more accurate like the room. And one last thing, actually, this is, I guess, kind of a bug, but on the environment layer, it's actually rotated 180 degrees because our default models, because of the way the After Effects coordinates are. So actually, you probably want to set this to zero. And uh, I'll do that for the other layer also. And that way, the reflections and stuff should line up uh, more accurately. But uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. And one other quick thing is you notice that the reflection on this particular object is very sharp. But the missile is probably not meant to be that sharp. So we could take the 1K texture here and pre-compose it again, leave all the attributes, and then open it up and add a fast blur. So blur, fast blur, crank this up a bit. And so now we can look closely here. It's reflecting it, but it's reflecting the blurred version of it. So I might go into the output, the multipass mixer, and you know, I could turn up the reflection amount here. So you can see that a little bit better. So that just looks you know, a little bit more realistic because it's not as, you know, perfectly shiny. So the difference, this is like the futuristic missile. And then you have, you know, the more realistic one. And, you know, you can even go into the scene setup and color correct it in here so I could desaturate it a little bit so it's not as, you know, vibrant of colors or whatever. And then, you know, you could add lights into your scene and the lights won't affect the background since we turned off all of those settings. So we could add a parallel light. And I can move this around and it won't affect the background. So our background's going to stay exactly the same. That is uh, some environment tips. Uh, hopefully this has helped you out a little bit. Now, if you want to create some of your own environments, what you can do is get a camera and shoot 360 degree images, stitch them together. There's some programs online, HDR shop. Um, you know, there's some free ones, PT GUI, I think it's called. And uh, just look for a panoramic stitching program. And then if you want to try to find some ones that you can use that are already created, you can go to Flickr, search for an equirectangular, and in the advanced settings, turn on Creative Commons, and so that you can find things that you're allowed to use in your projects, just uh, pay attention to the licensing requirements. Some of them have you know specific requirements, but basically you could go in, find some of these different images, download them, click on like uh, the plus or let's see all sizes and you can actually find some high quality ones like this goes up to 2k here um, but just save them import them in your project all right well i hope you guys found these tips useful my name is andrew kramer and we will see you next time